Okay, Pat, thank you. Um, well, good morning, everybody. As Pat mentioned, my name is Tim McCamey, um, Senior Solutions Consultant here at 321 Gang, and our topic today is going to be SysML Model Driven Architecture for Large Complex Systems. As I mentioned, or Pat mentioned, we have Kerry Wagner with us from the United States Army, and I'll turn this over to him in just a second. Uh, but I wanted to cover what we're going to cover today. We're going to take uh, the topic in three main sections today. First, Kerry is going to talk to us about why you'd want to use SysML, the advantages and so forth. Next, I will come online and uh, talk about some modeling tips, some uh, tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and, and best practices when you're actually constructing a SysML model. We'll hand it back to Kerry, and he will go through. Sorry, I hit my mute button there. He will go through the real-world benefits, so we'll see some actual numbers uh, coming out of the usage of SysML. Okay. Um, Pat introduced us. Thank you very much, Pat. And at this time, I am going to turn this over to Kerry Wagner, and he's going to cover our first section. So, Kerry? Okay. Thanks very much, Tim. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, does my screen look okay? Okay, let me give you the context. Most of this is 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 DoD centric. It's it, we, we, I, I work for the Army, a part of the I'm the Chief System Engineer at the Army's Life Cycle Support Center for the Aviation and Missile Research Development Engineering Center, and and our world and our context is substantially different from our our commercial brothers working in the in the auto industry and in the cell phones and 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 the oil patch and the medical system field because of not only the complexity of our systems, which is are tremendous and getting worse every year, but also the, 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 the complexity of the organizational structures. So if you look at this first chart, and I'm going to talk about the benefits of, of SysML later in, in this context of a program. So we have a developer who's the material solution provider, who is typically a, a contractor, a prime, or a lead system integrator, and their suppliers. They're responsible for developing the system and getting it fielded through uh, acceptance and certification and, and with the oversight of the pro program manager. But the program manager is not the final authority because the program manager also has stakeholders. So as the system development unfolds o o under during multiple years of development, maybe as much as 10 or more years, then the project manager has to continuously make sure as the system unfolds that the stakeholders' requirements are, are being, being represented and being sold. So how do you do this? Typically on a program in an old text-based way where requirements were text-based, I might have three to five feet of, of technical documentation at the software requirement specs level. Well, how do you expect a, a program executive office or a user representative from TRADOC, how do you expect them to go and assess that vast amount of, of, of technical of, of text to verify that it meets the needs of the warfighter. So, so this is a really substantial prop, problem, and as we start unfolding the benefits of SysML, there's going to be some ramifications to, to avoid the problems that we have in communication across such a large organizational structure. The second thing is, is as a system engineer, I would probably lose my system engineering license if I didn't have a V in there somewhere, right? Well, all joking aside, it's important for us to understand that we, we show the V all the time, but the V is purely a notional construct. It, it sometimes smacks of, of, of the engineering manufacturer development milestone B to milestone C.